Hello guys, welcome back to my channel DP Design and as you can see the title today is the competition I can not say the competition but it's actually a comparison what are SOLIDWORKS simulation giving the results how they are interpreting and how Abacus is giving the results so we are going to compare the both of results what are the difference and what are the cons and pros uh, that's all what we will talk about in the uh, this video so let's get started without wasting time so first we will create a part we, we will just do a simple cantilever problem in solidworks and same problem we will perform in the abacus so let's create a 50 by 50 mm of uh, this rectangular portion and we will extrude it to the 500 mm okay good uh, now we are giving the fixture at this point this surface is fixed and this uh, this surface will have the loading of uh, 10,000 newton and we will see what are the stress values and what are the displacement values so for this we will go to the simulation go to new study new static analysis yeah and you will apply the alloy steel so you must need uh, need to know the property that is young modulus that is 2.1 into 10 is to 11 newton per meter square yes and poison ratio is 0.28 okay that's fine now we are applying this material into uh, our geometry now we are giving the fixture at this point at this surface we have fixed and we clicked ok now we will apply the loading condition now on the loading condition we are applying and we are selecting the direction which is which will uh, act in a downward direction and you can apply the value over here that is 10,000 newton yes now as you can see i am done with my boundary condition same boundary condition i have to apply in the abacus so i will create my mesh i will go to the mesh parameters so i will do this around 7 mm the mesh size of 7 mm is good yes and the growth rate of 1.1 in the advance, we are selecting the Jacobian point set to 4. And okay, now we are focusing on a mesh quality. There is only one solid body, that's why it is highlighting the high on uh, selected geometry, right? So we don't have to edit anything into that. So we are almost having the fine meshing. So I have good processor, so I can do good mesh. Yeah, that is my flex. Uh, okay now i'm done with the meshing and i will run the result okay so as you can see this these are my results and stress level are almost coming around 2.9 into 10 to 8 which is very lower than the uh okay yield strength now we are checking the displacement which is 3.8 to 6 right so we will open our excel okay also you can uh, select the solidworks result and here you can write down the abacus Uh, this is displacement also you can write down this as well as well so now you are uh, done with the SOLIDWORKS so SOLIDWORKS is having a 3.826 mm of uh, resultant displacement 3.826 and our stress values are almost coming 2.9 into 10 is 2 weight Newton per meter square 2.919. Okay, 
now we must check in a bucket so how we are going to perform let's get started with the standard or explicit model over here you can select now we will go to the part we will create one and we will have a 3d the deformable part and the solid and the extrusion type so i will select the approximate size about uh, 50 by 50 we are going to create so approximate size scale is 100 now we will create one uh, this one bar which is having the 50 mm of this 50 mm of this length and height okay i'm done with that now i will click the done and what was our length 500 mm now now we are done with the geometry part uh, we will apply the material as you can see where i have applied the uh, this one alloy steel so it was having the property of 210 gpa so i will write down over here mechanical go to i will write down those values 210 and 23 you can type e raised to 3 and 0.8 was my poison ratio right so these values are in mega pascal okay now i will select okay you don't need a density right now because density is not required over here in this analysis so i will select the section i will create the material section which is my alloy steel you can write down alloy steel and you can select okay then you have to assign the section that this is the section of alloy steel so i will click done and i have only alloy steel over here and you can click so whenever you apply the material in abacus so it will turn into green green right and now we have to create instances for performing the assembly and uh, for further steps so i will go to the you can directly go to the assembly or you can directly create the instances from this so better you prefer this because for beginners it is uh, something something like a uh, step step wise uh, you are going right so it will uh, guide you how many procedure you have to do how you do it so that's how you go step by step now we don't have any part in the as a instance so what you can do you can create the instance and you can create okay you are uh, your type is dependent always make dependent for now i have explained in the past video uh, what is it independent in what is independent you can go through that in the abacus uh, ca tutorial i will create the apply yes now i will create the mesh okay before going on to the mesh i will create one reference point so as you can see for reference point tools you okay wait you don't have to go to the mesh you can go to the assembly and go to tools so as you can see there is no midpoint of this so what what you can do you can create one midpoint over that we'll select as you can see this is my create datum point midway between two points so i will select this and this now as you can see my point has been created already now you can apply the reference point over here so this is my rpn you rp1 and you can go to the features where uh, it will display your coordination system your datum and your reference point so you can delete from uh, the feature manager tree right feature tree now you can connect this face in the abacus you cannot uh, apply the force on the face directly so we must provide one reference point which is directly connected to your face that's why you need to give a mpc con constraint which is which can be called as a multi-point constraint so what you can do you can just go to the constraint and create one now you can go to the mpc and select yes 
so select a mpc control point what is my control point this is my control point and what are what is the geometry you want to control by this point so i will create this one this face so whenever you apply any type of load on a reference point one then it will directly act on this face that what means uh, by mpc constraint so that's why you have to create done an mpc type you just need to apply as a beam for now okay as you can see this is connected this is the symbol uh, or representation of a connectivity or a connection right now you have to create a set which kind of simulation you are going to perform is it a static is it dynamic or it is a static linear or static non linear so as you know this is a static linear process so you can go to the create and static general this is the step 1 okay create my nl geom is off right now because i don't want to perform any type of non linear effects over here so time period is 1 increment around 1000 maybe yeah and my initial loading will be my point 05 so that is my increment size it will be and i will click it okay so as you can see my analysis step has been created so now we are going to apply the loading over here can apply the load concentrate and force this one on this point as you can see my force will be act on a downward direction which is a minus y direction so yeah my 10000 newton zero okay as you can see your force direction has been displayed over here and now create the your boundary condition and encaster it so it will have a fixed surface over here now as you can see you can apply the mesh over here and you can apply the seats now you cannot mesh right now because it is in assembly mode i have created dependent mesh that's why i have to select a part and go to the part then and then i can apply the seeds over here so what type seed i will apply the five ah oh, it will be fine it should be three or four okay four is fine for now curvature control is on okay now i will create the mesh it has a good meshing capabilities better than solidworks i i i can say right but let's see what result is now i'll create the job i will create and i will use my processor up to four also you can if you have a better gpu then you can apply the gpu acceleration now i will select my working directory so my result will be saved in a trash and i will create one comparison now i will create a this is my directory okay in this my results are going to be saved right okay and also i must save this into this model comparison the file and my directory file has been saved now you can run your results by submitting your job as you can see you can monitor this and here we go my output data file my data file my message file is there my status file is there so status file is there one step is completed okay this are the increments have been performed throughout this simulation so now visualization and go to the model one 
it will not showcase the result because your odb file need to be directed over here or you you have to locate so i have located and yes you can see my results are out now now go to you displacement what is the displacement in this one 3.849 3.849 3.849 is very close to the what is the difference uh, there is a difference between the meshing capabilities that's why the results are coming a quite difference there is very negligible differences there so as you can see my stress level is the same and my displacement is almost same which is a 3.83 point only decimal places are different so as you can say the solvers are not that bad in a solidworks because solidworks and abacus both have a good capability of doing a, a fea simulation but abacus is very famous for doing the explicit simulation like if you want to blast a bomb if you want to uh, machine something and you have to crash something like bullet uh, tearing your uh, bulletproof jacket that kind of simulation you can perform in a abacus which which are don't available in a solvers so this is the video to those guys who are saying that uh, solvers fe is not that capable in the or not having a good accuracy so as you can see both results are the same there is not much different just because of meshing it has a decimal place of a difference otherwise you can go for a solidworks for a simple static linear analysis right so also you can perform your child part simulation and assembly simulation in solidworks until and unless it is comes in a explicit so that is all for the video and we will come up with a new video or new topic and also you can comment down what you require and what we must do for you to increase your knowledge and uh, yeah so thank you keep sharing keep loving and we will meet again thank you so much